Live from Copenhagen, Denmark, it's theCUBE. Covering Nutanix.next 2019. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back everyone to the Bella Center in Copenhagen, Denmark. We are kicking off day two of theCUBE's live coverage of Dot .next, Nutanix, the, the Nutanix show Dot .next. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside Stu Miniman, of course. Stu, the word of the day is delight. And, and Copenhagen, Denmark, which is year after year voted the most hap the happiest country, the country that coined the term Hygge, which means a sense of well-being, what do you think delight it means in, in the context of this show in particular? Yeah, uh, so, so Rebecca, right, yesterday I, I thought I only knew one word. I'd learned <laughs> tack, which was thank you, of course. But Huga is actually one I, I, I'd read about because uh, it's interesting. The study of happiness, they actually have an institute here uh, in, in Denmark uh, and talk about it, as you said, the, the people are some of the happiest and you say, wow, it's you know often cold and rainy and uh, things like that. But the, they, they do look into the study of delight um, and it, it, it's something that I find pretty fascinating. Uh, I read a book by Tony Shea, who's the, uh, the founder and CEO of Zappos, uh, and talked about, you know, we, we all talk about where you want to go in career and what you want to do, but, you know, how do we actually understand happiness? Um, and bringing it to the Nutanix show, uh, definitely th there is a certain uh, joy uh, from the community here. Uh, we've had a lot of talk with some of the practitioners as well as some of the Nutanix employees. Uh, they want to stay customer focused. Uh, they want to you know, build uh, these experiences, as the CEO, Deeraj Pandey, uh, said. Um, and therefore, it's not about that, that product, because so much in technology, it's that new shiny thing uh, that we understand. Well, it's never a silver bullet, and there's always the repercussions, and how do I have to reorganize? And things change so fast in technology, but if I can have experience, uh, we, we, the, the example get used all the time is you know what, what transformed when we moved to you know the smartphone to revolutionized by the iPhone uh, or so many other things that just pull together uh, that that simplicity uh, that gets baked in the design uh, something we we've talked about both uh, you know in, in in Denmark as well as uh, from the Nutanix discussion uh, so so pulling those pieces together uh, kind of the left brain right brain all pulling together uh, it, it has been interesting and uh, yeah. It, 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 it gives uh, kind of a highlight as to why uh, Copenhagen was a nice place. Uh, definitely, uh, we've enjoyed uh, you know b b being here at the show. Absolutely, and I think you're you're, you're right, and we're going to be talking a lot about design today because delight is one of those. Uh, again, it's uh, this ineffable quality. You don't know you're being delighted because you're just being delighted. It's just nice, the ease of use. Uh, and and Monica Kumar, who we had on the show yesterday, of course, was talking about all uh, all of the the elements that go into that, taking ten clicks and making it an easy swipe, eliminating downtime, just uh, an easy, intuitive use, which is, which is absolutely what goes into delighting customers. We're going to have Satish Ramachandran on the show today uh, talking more about design, too. Uh, tell me about the energy of the show. We're going to get into Nutanix a, a bit more today, too, but just what do you think about the energy? Uh, what, what's your feeling? So uh, there are certain shows that we go to where we know that you have the true believers at, at, at the show. Uh, uh, Splunks.conf is one where they, they all love the geeky t-shirts that they get and, and people enjoy their uh, service now, another one. A lot of these software companies it, you know, transform the way they think and, and, and they work. Uh, so you know, Dave Vellante for years would tell me about that community. Uh, community I know well, the, the VMworld community, uh, this reminds me of earlier days in VMworld. VMware, you know, is dominant in their space, but you know, their show is not exactly, you know, a, a there are parties and there are friends uh, that we get together, and one of the best communities uh, in the industry, but. You know, it's a much, much bigger company when you're 60,000 people and uh, things like that. There, there's not as much of the kind of smaller, uh, you know, touch and feel. Uh, you know, we, we heard uh, from Monica yesterday, she talked about right when she joined the company, you know, somebody she knew had reached out about an issue that needed to be worked out and just seamless all swarming to solve that issue. Uh, something you know, I, I've done it. Uh, some companies I've worked at, where where you know a team's pulling for, you know, the customer comes first, and you get 
get things done. Uh, so uh, the customers here definitely are highly engaged, very excited, uh, because the experience of using the solution uh, has made their lives easier and helped them transform their business. You know, that goal of IT helping to not only support but be a driver of, of the business uh, is, is exciting. So, so exactly, and this is what we're going to be talking about today too. As, as Nutanix, they have this passionate customer base which they will need as they are a maturing company. So now, now they're 10, they're, they're hitting their, their, their tween age years. <laughs> so talk a little bit about what you're seeing about Nutanix trajectory and, and what it needs to do to, to hit those next steps? Yeah, so you know, the, the discussion for the last like two years has been the move from uh, removing hardware for something that they sold, which was uh, always it was the software that was important and Nutanix really passed along the hardware, to this move to subscription. And along with that, it isn't just the same core AOS uh, Nutanix software and some of the pieces that go with it, but really they're expanding beyond infrastructure software uh, to some of the application software. So yesterday we had uh, Nicola, uh, uh, who's the CEO of Frame. Uh, Frame is desktop as a service. Uh, so that was the type of software that sat on top of Nutanix or on top of the cloud, expanding in that market. We're going to have Bala on today to talk about Era. It's database. You know, database absolutely an application that sat on Nutanix, uh, but now they're building some of these applications. It's interesting, almost 10 years ago, VMware tried to get into the application space, um, they, they, they bought an email company, they bought a social company, uh, and really that didn't pan out well for them. Uh, Amazon does not sell many of their, they, they sell some of their own applications, but most of them are an open source uh, solution that is then delivered as opposed to you know, building applications on top of them. Uh, building applications is the, the realm of you know, Oracle, uh, and, and Microsoft, and uh, you know, IBM have these. So it, it positions Nutanix uh, in, a, in a little bit of different space, and how much are they going to have the customers that have bought the platform that will build these services, leverage these services on top of them, versus how many customers will come to them because of that application? Say, oh, well, you know, database is one of those challenging things. If I can just have a nice simple solution, and maybe that's in the cloud, or maybe it is on, uh, you know, a Nutanix environment in their data center on their server of choice. Um, you know, there are some paths for Nutanix going forward to a much broader TAM, uh, but it, it's much broader competition too. And uh, you know, there, there's Salesforce and there's go to market. There, there's partners. Uh, we're going to spend a little time talking talking about like the systems integrators today. Uh, so it is a big vast sea out there in the IT world um, and, and Nutanix has carved out a nice position where they are today, uh, but uh, the, you know, opening up a number of areas uh, of adjacencies that, that they're going. Um, so as, as they ride this software wave uh, that they're pushing, uh, it, it's an interesting one to set them up for the next 10 years. Absolutely, so what do you see are the biggest headwinds facing Nutanix right now? I mean, as we've said, they have a passionate cu customer base. They've, on the main stage this morning, we heard about their high net promoter score. We heard about their, their uh, amazing customer retention, uh, so much repeat business. What do you think, though, is, is sort of the main, what should be keeping Deeridge Pandy up at night? Yeah, so, so one of the biggest challenges is, is you know, you're a 5,000 person company, how do you keep growing at that pace? How can I hire? Uh, we heard in Europe, it, it, is a, you know, it is a challenging market to hire. You are no longer that small startup that I'm going to get some IPO uh, bang for a buck. Now I'm a public company, uh, you know, and you know, there, there are stock incentives and things you can do, uh, but Nutanix has a number of areas that they think they have exciting ways for uh, people to be a part of some of these next waves uh, that, that they're pushing, um, but that, that is a big challenge. Um, there, there is really co-opetition out there. We've spent a bunch of time talking about the ecosystem. Uh, they have a decent ecosystem, uh, but uh, their position in the cloud world is they are a player amongst many, 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 you know, hundreds if not thousands of companies out there. When if you go to Amazon uh, reInvent, you can find the Nutanix booth, but it, it's it's not one of the big players there. Uh, you know, you go to the Microsoft show, go to the Google shows. Um, they are a small piece of that, and we asked Deeraj as to, you know, how do you position yourself and how do you, you know, get get awareness in, in this environment. So. Uh, when they had two down quarters, it was definitely marketing and sales were the areas that they said they could not hire fast enough, um, so they are going to need to invest more, and 
they still aren't profitable. So we are almost three years past the IPO. If you look at the transition to software, their revenues have been relatively flat, their margins have been going up, but the market will not reward them if they can't keep the growth going. And you know, start getting you know, closer to that full profitability. Exactly, exactly. Well, these are all going to be topics that we're going to dig deeper into today. We've got a great lineup of guests, and then, of course, the final keynote speaker, one of your faves. Yeah, well, Kit Harrington. So, well, Rebecca, what did you think of uh, Caroline? Caroline was not. Yeah, yeah. She was fantastic, and yeah. I think what was really exciting about the interview, or was name is uh, Benigo Pai. Benigo Pai, a friend of yours, uh, was was how he was really drawing these analogies to Nutanix journey. It's similar to a, that of a professional athlete, and that is someone who ha, who's getting knocked down and has to get back up again. Someone who's hit, get, winning a few things, winning some business here, but she still needs yeah, to she, keep her. Yeah, she made a great point. Where said, right, the, you know, the day after she was named number, number one, one, her father was like, "Well, you need to get lower. You need to do this." And she's like, "Wait, I, I'm number one, but y you have to keep working, or yeah. everyone will come after you." And so Nutanix is in a strong position, but absolutely, they know that they need to keep working and training and improving, listening to their customers uh, to move forward. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so I think she had a lot of lessons for, for, Nutan for, for the Nutanix community too. So Stu, I'm excited for day two. We're going to have a lot of great, a lot of great customers and, and Nutanix people on the show today too. Yeah, looking forward to it. And they had a fun party last night. They had the DJs were bumping. They had nice international food, uh, some art, and some interesting people dressed up as All hedges right. and okay. fruit and things walking around. So um, it was a little bit weird, but a lot of fun. They're the happiest country in the world. What can we say? I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Stay tuned for more of the Cube's live coverage of Nutanix.next. <laughs>